Welcome to my series on 100 places to visit in a lifetime, inspired by the book, 1000 places to see before you die. In this video, I'll show you some of the most awe-inspiring destinations in the world, from the Americas to Europe to Asia and the South Pacific. Make sure to take notes as there are surely places in this video to add to your bucket list. Have you been to any of these incredible places? Let me know in the comments. We depart now from North America. Traveling up to southwestern Utah now, Bryce Canyon is a national park full of unique geological rock formations called hoodoos that make for quite an eerie landscape. The hoodoos are tall rock spires that look like coral reefs rising from the desert floor, stunning at any time of day, but especially at sunrise or sunset. By night, Bryce Canyon is the perfect place for stargazing, where you can get a clear view of the Milky Way in all its magnificence. The area also has hiking trails for all levels, from leisurely walks around the rim to more challenging hikes down to the Bryce Amphitheater, which is open year-round. There's also a free shuttle that takes you there from April to October. If you're looking for a tropical paradise, look no further than Bora Bora, the largest island in French Polynesia. Bora Bora is famous for its iconic overwater bungalows that allow you to see directly into the clear turquoise water below. Of course, you can also swim in it. With its white sand beaches fringed with palm trees, Bora Bora is the perfect place for some rest and relaxation, or a romantic getaway. But there are also plenty of activities for you to do there, from snorkeling and parasailing to deep sea fishing and sunset cruises. Although a stay at one of Bora Bora's luxury resorts can start from $400 to more than $1,200 per night, you can rent a garden or beach bungalow for less than half the price. There's also budget accommodation available at guest houses and pensions starting from $75 per night. Before you leave, head over to Vitape to shop Bora Bora's most famous souvenir, real black pearls. You can also go pearl diving. Easter Island is one of the most remote places on the planet, located in the Pacific Ocean nearly 4,000 kilometers off the coast of Chile. It has a population of only 8,000 people, but it's most famous for its nearly 1,000 statues, known as Moai, which are scattered across the island. It's still a mystery how the early Rapa Nui people of Easter Island were able to carve these giant structures from hardened volcanic ash, as each one is estimated to weigh 14 tons. And although there's not much info on the history of this mysterious land, it is a place you can visit today to explore and learn more about. A good time to go is in early February to join the locals in the annual Tapati Festival, a celebration that includes singing, dancing, sports, horse racing, and other activities. Nestled amidst the Himalaya mountain range, the Valley of Flowers in Chamoli, India is a popular trek that draws nature lovers and adventure seekers from around the world. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site that's home to endangered animals and rare plants. Stretching over 87 square kilometers, the valley boasts 600 exotic flower species that bloom during the summers, giving it a psychedelic look. If you go, also visit the nearby Hemkun Shrine to see the Lake of Snow, one of the most sacred lakes in India. Mauritius is a tropical island nation in the Indian Ocean, located off the eastern coast of Africa. With 720 miles of coastline, it's home to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world, especially on the Lamorne Peninsula, which is also a haven for kite surfers. If snorkeling and swimming are more your thing, check out Flick and Flack, one of the longest beaches on the island. Mauritius is home to two UNESCO World Heritage Sites, as well as the Seven Colored Earths, 
a geological formation of sand dunes striped in seven different colors. If you love Mauritius and decide you want to stay, you can apply for their digital nomad visa, which is free and fast to apply. If you're a Lord of the Rings or Chronicles of Narnia fan, then you'll definitely want to take a trip to the Southern Alps of New Zealand. Stretching over the length of the South Island, the Southern Alps are more than 3,000 meters high and 500 kilometers long, including New Zealand's tallest peak, Mount Cook, and the country's third largest glacier, Fox Glacier. The Southern Alps are a haven for adrenaline junkies, with whitewater rafting and hiking in the summer, and heli skiing and snowboarding in the winter. Whether you're seeking stunning landscapes, adventure sports, or serene solitude, this remarkable region is a destination for you. For accommodation, you can find places to stay in the surrounding towns such as Mount Cook, Arrowtown, Queenstown, or Wanaka. You may have heard of Uruguay's Punta del Este, but how about Jose Ignacio? This secluded coastal town is one of South America's smallest villages, with only 200 inhabitants. But that doesn't stop celebrities from flocking there for the gorgeous beaches and privacy from the paparazzi. Even if you don't need to flee photographers, however, you'll enjoy the laid-back vibe and low-key atmosphere. If you're looking for beautiful, uncrowded beaches and delicious grilled meats, fish, and seafood, Jose Ignacio is the place for you. Famed Argentine chef Francis Malman also has a restaurant there called Garçon, where everything is cooked over an open flame. If you go, head to the top of Jose Ignacio's lighthouse and get a bird's eye view of the town. Orlando, in my home state of Florida, is the theme park capital of the world, where you can visit the Walt Disney World Resort, Universal Studios, and Epcot Center all in a few days. Beyond theme parks, though, there are also water parks such as Disney's River Country and Typhoon Lagoon. I also recommend camping at the Fort Wilderness Resort. In Orlando, there's plenty of shopping, dining, and entertainment awaiting you. Take a ride on the Orlando Eye Observation Wheel, explore International Drive, or head down to Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville at Universal City Walk, the epicenter of awesome. With so much to do in Orlando, you'll have to return time and again. No wonder it's ranked as the second most fun city in the United States. Neelam Valley, located in the Azad Kashmir region of Pakistan, is known for its scenic landscapes and fog-laced lush forests. Whereas Kashmir is called the paradise of the world, Neelam Valley is the paradise of Kashmir. Pakistan has been an up-and-coming travel destination for years now, rated the top holiday destination of 2020 by Condé Nast Traveler. The locals in Kashmir are especially known for their kindness and hospitality, as well as their rich culture and cuisine. Taste the local flavors of Neelam Valley by sampling traditional dishes and regional specialties like trout, chapli kebab, and Kashmiri tea. Also spend a day in Kel, a picturesque town at the base of the Sarwali Glacier, the biggest and highest of the region. Around 1,400 kilometers north of Perth, near the coast of Western Australia, you'll find Karajini National Park, one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's the second largest park in the state of WA with an area of more than 600,000 hectares, filled with narrow canyons and spectacular gorges that reach up to 100 meters high. The contrast between the blue and green ravines and waterfalls against the reddish-orange rock formations is truly a sight to behold, as well as the animal life. A haven for bird watchers, there are 125 species of birds here, as well as kangaroos, wallabies, dingoes, and more. The best time of year to visit is from late autumn to early spring in Australia, when temperatures are best for walking and hiking. 
A pass to enter the park is $15 per day, and it's recommended to set aside three to five days here to explore this natural wonder. You can also stay at the Eco Retreat there. Known for its vibrant culture, stunning beaches, and breathtaking scenery, Rio de Janeiro is a destination to visit at least once in your life. Christ the Redeemer statue, Sugarloaf Mountain, and Copacabana Beach are just a few of the famous landmarks to visit there. But the magic of Rio is that you can experience it from the skies above as well as the streets below. Exploring local neighborhoods, talking to the people, and immersing yourself in the colorful atmosphere will make you feel right at home and very likely never want to leave. It's also a place where you can visit favelas, such as Rocinha and Vidgal, which are known for their burgeoning artistic scene and nightlife. Other popular areas for nightlife are Lapa and Ipanema, that offer you plenty of samba music and caipirinhas on tap. One reason I really want to go to Rio is to see the most beautiful library in the world, the Royal Portuguese Reading Room, which dates back to 1837. And if you're looking to hit the streets for carnival, that takes place every February, but Rio will welcome you with open arms at any time of year. If Italy's Tuscany region has ever been on your travel radar, consider a visit to the Moravian fields in Czechia, known for their striking similarities. With rolling fields, lush vineyards, and plenty of wine on tap, the picturesque landscape makes for an idyllic setting, perfect for relaxation and connecting with nature. This region produces some of the finest wines in the country, making it a great destination to visit local wineries and indulge in a wine tasting session. Local towns in the area, such as Mikulov, feature well-preserved architecture, cobblestone streets, and medieval charm. It's also a place for you to visit Lednes and Baltus castles, both UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and learn more about the region's past. For example, did you know? Moravian Fields is where the first car in Central Europe was designed, by Tatra in 1897. In this area, you can also enjoy plenty of outdoor sports, including fishing, golfing, and horseback riding. And don't miss the ancient Mion Sea Forest, one of the largest swaths of old growth forest in Czechia. Tucked in the Veneto region of Northern Italy is the charming city of Verona, famous for being the setting of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. You can even visit Juliet's famous house and balcony there in the heart of the city or get married in Capuletti Hall. Founded in 89 BC, Verona has a rich history dating back to Roman times. The well-preserved Roman amphitheater there, known as the Arena di Verona, is still active today, hosting world-class operas and other performances. Italy is synonymous with spectacular food, and Verona is no exception. Indulge in local specialties such as Amarone wine, risotto, gnocchi, and, if you're adventurous, patissata de caval, a stew that's traditionally prepared with horse meat. For an escape from the city, travel about an hour away and you'll find Lake Garda, one of the most beautiful lakes in the country. If you love food, shopping, and art, you must visit Oaxaca, the birthplace of mezcal, named the best city in the world by Travel and Leisure in 2022. This dynamic Mexican state offers you countless cultural experiences to discover. First, take to the streets and explore the street food, street art, and authentic outdoor markets. Central de Asbastos is among the biggest markets in Mexico, a bustling marketplace measuring over 800 square acres. But if you need an escape, try the much smaller Atemporal Design Market or the city's botanical gardens. 
By night, savor smoky mezcal or a craft cocktail at one of the many rooftop bars and fine dining restaurants throughout the city. And consider taking a food tour or cooking class with locals, which you can find on Airbnb experiences. And if you want to escape city life for a bit, you have an array of day trips awaiting you, from the beaches of Puerto Escondido to the ruins of Mitla and Monte Alban. On the quiet and peaceful Gulf Coast of Florida lies one of the top retirement destinations in the U.S., Sarasota. This city welcomes millions of tourists every year for its fabulous beaches, world-class golf courses, and plethora of things to do. In Sarasota, you can see the famous Ringling Museum of Art, which contains 28,000 art pieces or enjoy a performance by the Sarasota Opera or Ballet. Nearby is one of my favorite beaches in Florida, the stunning Siesta Key. With its powder white sand and crystal clear water, it's easy to see why it was ranked the number one beach in America by TripAdvisor. It's definitely worth a visit, and if you go, make sure to enjoy a meal or happy hour at one of the many beachfront restaurants and bars in the area. So if you're looking for good food, rest, and relaxation, Siesta Key, Sarasota is definitely the place. Up in the Northwest Pacific corner of the United States, you'll find the birthplace of Starbucks and coffee culture in America, Seattle. Seattle is a must visit destination for its Pike Place Market and incredible culinary scene. It's also home to the famous Olympic Sculpture Park, Discovery National Park, and Woodland Park Zoo. There's Mount Rainier for hiking, Bon Vivant for wine tasting, and the Ho Rainforest, where one square inch of silence was dedicated on Earth Day in 2005. Other fun things to do in Seattle include taking a tour at the Seattle Chocolate Factory, visiting a craft brewery or two, and taking in the views from the famous Space Needle, Seattle's equivalent of the Eiffel Tower. In Northwest Spain, Santiago de Compostela is a cultural melting pot that's attracted pilgrims from around the world as it's the final destination on the famed Camino de Santiago. According to local legend, it's also the final resting place of St. James, the patron saint of Spain, who's reportedly buried in the Santiago Cathedral. In July, the city celebrates the Festival of St. James with traditional music, dancing, and food. It's a great time to visit. You'll also find that the city is divided into two parts, the Old Town and the New Town. The Old Town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site with all of the charm of a medieval city, while the New Town is more compact and modern, filled with bars, clubs, restaurants, and perfect for trying local tapas, also called pinchos. A few hours away, you can also visit Cape Fistera, which the ancient Romans believed was the end of the known world. Havana, the capital of Cuba, is one of the most colorful cities in the world. I love Havana for its historic vibes, friendly people, and vibrant energy, and I'm definitely not alone. Around every corner, you'll encounter tropical fruits, neoclassical architecture, live music, and plenty of rum. Whether you visit Hemingway's favorite bar, El Floridita, or the famous La Bodeguita del Medio, you're never too far from a mojito or a cortadito. And don't forget shopping. Havana is well known for its antiques markets and art galleries. At sunset, you can take a stroll along El Malecón, a seafront promenade that's perfect for people watching. And by night, you can experience the vibrant salsa scene at Casa de la Musica in Miramar or the Tropicana Cabaret. Havana is also a great place to visit nearby beaches, such as Varadero, or you can head west to the Valley of Viñales. 
Hvar is the most famous island in Croatia, once rated as one of the 10 most beautiful islands in the world by Condé Nast Traveler. It's also one of my personal favorites. Known as the island of sunshine, beaches, wine, and olive oil, you can't go wrong with a trip to Havar. And as soon as you arrive, you might not want to leave. Spend your days relaxing on one of the many beaches, attend a sunset DJ set at Hula Hula Bar, or hike up to Fortica, the Havar Fortress. For day trips, take a kayak tour to the nearby Pakaleni Islands or go swimming, snorkeling, or diving in the crystal clear turquoise waters. From Havar, you can also reach the famous Blue Cave or Blue Grotto by speedboat or ferry. And once you work up an appetite, have a plate of gregada, a traditional fish stew made with white wine, potatoes, and plenty of olive oil. Try it with a glass of Plavak Mali, the most famous wine in the region. Socotra Island in the Indian Ocean is the largest island in Yemen. It's also one of the most unusual places on Earth due to its dragon's blood trees that you won't find anywhere else. Also called the Galapagos of the Indian Ocean, it's home to 225 species of birds, 730 species of fish, and plenty of bugs, reptiles, and bats. Socotra is at least 20 million years old, and some even wonder if it's the Bible's original Garden of Eden. Since ancient times, it's been an important trade route, especially for the Greeks, and it's known for its medicinal plants, aloe, frankincense, and myrrh. So if you're looking for a unique and isolated destination with an ancient local culture and people, Socotra is a place for you. It's one of only four UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Yemen. Thank you for traveling with me today. And if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe and click over here to keep watching.